Hello and welcome friends to a new episode of our narrative driven campaign for Total War Warhammer 3 playing as the Pirates of Sartosa under Aranus Assault Spite and specifically playing as a revamped Pirates of Sartosa faction, mostly human with some zombie cannon fodder. And to recap from our last episode, we're picking up on our North African Araby campaign where we established a foothold on the, the peninsula island of Phyrus. What is your demand? But we are in a bit of a dilemma here as the forces of Ark and the Black have pushed southward, taking the land of Kofir and also surrounding Al Hakik, which they might potentially take over the end turn too. But I do have a very cheesy way of dealing with Ark and the Black and actually vassalizing him and, well, to put it lightly, simply making him my bitch. Now, in order to actually vassalize Arkan, I will need to use a mod called the Trade Settlements mod. And basically, this is kind of like the actual trading settlements mechanic, but also it does remove the restriction of us having to be neighbors with the, the faction in order to take certain settlements. And this does require me to have a lot of gold, which we did gain uh, over several turns after uh, declaring war on distant enemies and also making deals with certain factions too. Most of this also came from selling territory to Clan Angren, taking it back uh, from uh, Ikidclaw when Ikidclaw was uh, attacking the dwarves and reselling it back to Clan Angren. So a whole bunch of territory uh, gaining and also selling off territory. But that aside, we're going to uh, go into the Trade Settlements mod here, go to the Followers of Nagash, offer gold for the land of the Wizard Caliph's uh, Palace, which is a very steep asking point at 30,000 gold, but we're going to confirm the trade. And we did uh, go from 70,000 to 40,000, but at the same time, let's scroll down over here and we can actually use the trade settlements mechanic to sell the, the wizard uh, the palace back uh, to uh, some uh, factions in the area here or we could actually go to diplomacy and it's very dependent too as sometimes diplomacy or uh, the trade uh, settlements mechanic uh, can work out better depending uh, on uh, uh, where everyone is and who is willing to pay the most but we're going to scroll down to the ogre kingdoms go to the famish faction and we're going to trade the wizard caliph's palace all right so they're willing to pay ten thousand for that let's actually double check and see if maybe they're willing to pay more We could also potentially sell it to our Dwarven allies too, with Clan Angron. Which actually it does look like they're willing to pay over 12,000 for that. So we're going to give that to our Dwarven friends. Gain back at least a little bit of money there. Be careful what you wish. All right, and then we're also going to uh, rinse and repeat with several uh, other settlements that they have. And yes, my apologies, everyone, for not for not starting off this episode with the battle like I have in my previous episodes. But this is essentially my roundabout way of dealing with Arkin. So we're going to pay for the Sorcerer's Islands. All right, we still have. A little over 30,000, thankfully. Alright, and because we're also friendly with Clan Angrun, let's see if we can... I am Beliga, true king of the Eight Peaks. Give them the Sorcerer's Islands. Ooh, and also we're, we're going to get a steep asking price for that too, so they are willing to pay almost as much as what we paid for. So essentially, we're saving a whole bunch of money this way. And also, we're on good friendly relations, relatively good friendly relations with them. Alright, now I think you guys are catching on to the gist of what I have planned here. 
So we're going to pay for La Chique. And also we're going to go back to the, the, the diplomacy screen. And yes, I should also say that I'm using a mod that is essentially better diplomacy bribes or more reasonable diplomacy if I remember that. I should also add my list of mods in either the pinned comment or, or the video description, which I did promise someone else uh, in a previous comment. But going back to our little rinse and repeat, and I know this is a total war game, but at the same time, I do like how there is diplomacy and I do like that there are uh, creators and modders out there that want to add different mechanics and uh, rather than just constant warfare all the time. But we're going to trade La Chique to them for... Ooh, also, hang on now. Let's... Well, let's see first how much they're willing to pay. Alright, so 40,000. We could have easily possibly made Belagar our vassal here. But I'm really tempted to take uh, the 40,000 from them. Yeah, let's take it because that puts us actually higher. Well, almost uh, what we had at the beginning, too. And then we're going to actually trade... The sea brings now, this is the key moment here. We are... Let's go to followers of, of Nagash. Right, their only settlement left is Kofur. Which is going to be a steep asking point at 16,000. But we're going to trade them Fyrus. And here is the kicker here. We're going to give them Fyrus, but we have two armies uh, right outside Fyrus. So we're going to give them Fyrus. Pay... 9,000. It's not going to be as bad. We'll get Kofor. And let's actually go back to the diplomacy here. Clan Angren, how much are you willing to pay us for Kofor? Alright, 28,000. We'll definitely take it there. And now we also have more than what we started out with. We went from 70,000 to 88,000 gold there after a whole bunch of roundabout trading. And now with Fyrus as their last settlement, we're gonna take this army here under Captain Charlie Jenkins. Now wait, hang on, let's see. Who is Arkin at war with? They're at war with Kemri, but we have not discovered Kemri yet. Launch our attack there. Alright, declare war. And also, <laughs> this is going to be a decisive victory for us. We recently just recaptured the city of Fyrus from uh, the Outremer the Bretonian faction from my previous episode. And also our subtle... Well, the weird thing is, is uh, when we captured it, we uh, garrisoned it with some of our own troops. But also, we could almost say, like, our settlement garrison, it's pretty much a skeleton crew at this point. But let's just auto-resolve that. And now we'll be given the option to potentially vassalize Arkin here with the subjugate mechanic. And also, that's the thing too, is I am also playing with a mod that's... I forgot the exact name of, but it does give us the option to vassalize for all factions rather than just the Warriors of Chaos. So we're going to become the master of Arkin, and he's going to have to not just pay tribute to us, but also his armies are going to essentially, in a way, become our armies too. And yeah, you can see here on the battle map, Arkin the Black, his armies under or his Hierophants are now ours too. So essentially, North Africa is ours uh, for the taking here. We do have uh, one last en enemy settlement uh, at Martek, and also the Arabians uh, might not be huge fans of uh, us uh, after we made a deal with Arken. Yeah, we can see here that strategic threat and also past treaties with the followers of Nagash. And let's see how things panned out with Clan Angren too. We're still in good relation, relatively good relations, but we also did have some treaties with Nagash and hmm, 
I'm not saying that uh, this is going to ruin our relationship with Clan Angron, but essentially, there are friendly allies that are securing our northern border. In a way, they are also securing our southern border here uh, with the territories we've sold them. Plus, also, let's see. Come then, we have uh, Greybeard's Prospectors. So I'm not going them. to be too worried about them. They're just a minor dwarf faction. But yeah, essentially, that is how we're going to start this this episode with me gaining a crazy amount of money from Clan Angren and also making a very backhanded, backstabby maneuver to vassalize Ark in the Black. And now I have essentially a secure southern and northern border. Now, returning to our home base of Sartosa, we are upgrading the settlement, which is going to take four turns here. We also have an option to... Uh, uh, increase uh, our growth uh, building here and also income but I'm going I might save up money uh, for that later down the line and also we are essentially farming Ikit Claw here at Verezzo after retaking a whole bunch of territory from Clan Scryer we're leaving Aranesic here as a way to essentially farm Ikit's uh, trait of increased res research development because if we take a look at the technology tree here for the revamped uh, RNS Assault Spite, it's not as beefy as the dwarves but it's definitely up there and also it's going to take quite a while uh, without Ikit's trait to uh, uh, research a lot of these uh, skill lines here. And fast forwarding back to the diplomacy screen, I do plan on declaring war on the Sultanate of Araby under Sultan Jafar, which in a way it's us freeing the Arabians if you really think about it. Because Sultan Jafar, lore wise, is a tyrant of the Arabians, and also in a way we can make friends with the other Arabians of the Sultanate of Al Kalabad. I believe they're a more friendlier. Arabian faction, but I do plan on taking Al Hakik for myself to use as my capital city and also as a staging ground to move into Zandri and other parts of Araby and essentially Warhammer Africa. Now, these dwarves uh, of the Eye of the Panther, or let's see what their actual name is Greybeard's Prospectors, I don't have to worry about them too much. I don't think they're too much of expansionists, they're more protective, so we're not going to move into their territory. But that is my plan, is to use our expeditionary armies here led by Captain Charlie Jenkins and Captain Connor Sawyer to launch dual attacks on al Hakik. And also, I am using a mod that allows us to have our own warbands attached to us, which we've also decided to attach Ark in the Black's army to this army led by Charlie Jenkins. And it does save us a bit of money and upkeep so we don't have to use our own forces against the Arabians. But al Hakik will fall over the end turn. And also I do plan on uh, taking out Martek as well. But we'll fast forward uh, to that in just a minute. Actually, before we do that, I know I said I was going to save up on a bit of money, but also I do want to add a little bit more extra control to uh, our province of Sartosa. And let's see here. Income 225. Yeah, might as well invest into that uh, while I can. As for Aranessa, we're going to keep her in camp there. And then let's take a look at some of the skill trees we got going on with our captains here. I am uh, putting a lot of points into these abilities such as Sartosa Great grape shot which allows us to essentially in a way role play us having ships on the battlefield or ships off the coastline firing down onto enemy forces on deck. as for connor hornergold i do plan to farm ikid claw and give ikid claw's trait to him eventually once i've uh, given it to rns assault spite but we'll end the turn here and yes thank you everyone as well for being patient in that introduction scene where essentially I was doing quite a bit of diplomatic backstabbing, but I do promise we'll uh, fast forward to a very epic battle here for Al Hakik. Now I did say I really wanted to take on Sultan Jafar, however the city of Martek is way too tempting for me, plus also we're going to be reinforced by 
two of our Tomb King armies here as well, which don't know how the heck they were able to recruit a bunch of Noblars or Ogre Bulls, possibly from a mercenary mechanic or caravan that passed by them. But also, we're going to make the attack, and also, I'm going to fight this manually because I'm going to hold back my entire forces and just have my vassals do all the work for me. But we'll try to make this as cinematic as possible for you all to enjoy. Okay, so admittedly, I am playing the coward and scumbag move of hiding all of my army in the forest line, but I may send a few out, such as my dwarf pirates and also my commanding lord to the battlefield should my allies muck things up but it's going to be their near undead endless hordes versus a handful of bretonians and also this will be the fall of martek and the end of the outremer bretonian faction but i'll fast forward to them pouring on the battlefield and let's make this as cinematic and also i'm i'm going to work on my battle commentary for this as well too all right, admittedly speaking, I did have to fast forward quite a bit and also debate the Bretonians into actually attacking us by sending out my captain by himself. And also, I do need to be aware too that the Crownless Lord may potentially snipe my fleet captain, which we're also taking fire from quite a bit of the peasant bowmen with pox arrows. However, I am also waiting for my allies to use their dire wolves and also their bats out on the left flank uh, to a roundabout and then make an attack on their archers and also the Nehekarans are closing in with their own forces here too. Skeleton warriors out on the left flank, two of them actually, and also a couple uh, more uh, skelly warriors and spearmen with some ogres uh, to back them up and give them much needed uh, punching power as well. This group of uh, men at arms about to absolutely collide into these skeletons here, but also getting damage from uh, fire from my fleet captain. Peasant mobs attempting uh, to overwhelm on the right flank and uh, make a breakthrough for themselves. And I'm going to uh, have the coward's way art out of sending my captain back, but then also saving up my Sartosa grape shot uh, for that massive uh, damage output there. Let's uh, get this lined up. Ooh, and bats coming in to harass uh, the front lines here too. An absolute indiscriminate explosion across the battle lines there. Devastating and disrupting the, uh, this uh, main center point, but also kind of hurting our allies too. All right, let's see how things are going out on the left flank. What is my allies doing? Okay, they've decided to send their dire wolves to instead take out these men at arms with shields. Ooh, lots of brutal deaths going on there. Honestly, well, the AI probably should have used them against these uh, pox arrow archers, but then again, they are our allies, so not going to uh, care or worry about them too much. King Sentua finding a gap in the middle there and also exploiting it, charging it headlong into these uh, pox bowmen. How that's going to pan out for him, not entirely sure because he's also getting sniped by this crownless lord here. Bretonian archers doing their desperate attempt to actually uh, defend the, their homeland, but their front lines and well, you can only ask so much of peasants. Falling and also getting completely overwhelmed by a combination of bats, zombies, and also, yeah, no, complete encirclement of the Bretonians here. Near undead horde, basically just enveloping and overwhelming them. And that grape shot, grape shot from the Sartosans did not help whatsoever. Yeah, mass routes going on here, and even uh, their garrison commander fleeing from the battlefield. Only uh, a known uh, the last man fighter is their crownless lord, aka their Robin Hood. Alright, we are taking fire from him though, so we're going uh, to retreat uh, as fast as possible. Wow, he is absolutely singling out our lord there but also himself getting completely overwhelmed 
and Ogre is coming in late into the fight as per usual to pick up the scraps and also uh, to really uh, just take out retreating enemies as well. Yeah, this isn't even a battle at this point. It is an absolute massacre. But how is the Crownless Lord doing? Well, not really too much uh, health being lost, but also morale completely plummeting. Let's head over to these dire wolves here too. Yeah, charging into this peasant mob and uh, mowing them down as we speak. Lots of brutality going on there, and they are fast. Complete swarm, and yeah, no, this is essentially what it's like uh, with uh, a whole bunch of dire wolves to overrun and also cut down uh, the retreating enemies. May not be uh, super powerful on the battlefield themselves, but when it comes to routing units, they hurt where it counts, for sure. And yeah. No surprise there, absolute mass route of the Bretonians. Crownless Lord having no choice but to accept his impending doom. Alright my friends, I know this is a bit of a shorter episode compared to my previous ones. However, my main goal was to showcase how I was able to absolutely vassalize and take over Arkan's armies, which now you could say this is... A start of not necessarily a brand new campaign, but definitely a new chapter where we have Ark in the Black and all of his Tomb King armies at our disposal to lay waste to uh, our southern border and take absolute control. We might even, if Belagar proves to be a bit of a threat, try to uh, take back the territories that were that we in a way sold to Clan Angron. But please do let me know in the comments where you would like me to take this campaign next, whether it's it's to betray Belagar, or if you think that we are confident enough to launch attacks into Norska now. I do have a considerable amount of fleets and a bit of money too, even though we are in the negative income. But also, I do have off uh, the channel too, I do plan on farming Ikiklaw at least one last time because I think Clan Scryer is about to be wiped out by Belagar. But do let me know if there are things that you would love to see me improve upon, whether it's strategy or battle commentary. And also, for the new and returning viewers, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this episode of our narrative-driven campaign. Let me know in the comments also which factions are your personal favorites, non-modded, but also personally modded as well. And I'd love to play those little legendary lords for you all in the future too. And some housekeeping on the side, friends. Admittedly, with my IRL and work schedule, I haven't been able to produce as many episodes and videos for you all to enjoy, but I do plan to change that up really soon too. Hopefully, having a three-day weekend or changing my schedule to that potential three-day weekend will allow me more creativity time and also more leeway to actually film and batch out these episodes for you all to enjoy down the line too. But for new viewers, if you love this style of campaign gameplay and let's plays, consider hitting that like, subscribe, and bell icon notifications, and I'll save you all a seat at the table for the next adventure. Until then, take care and farewell.